The most spectacular astronomical event of the year is just around the corner, a total solar eclipse. At the same time, the sun is approaching its maximum activity and is about to make a pole shift. This could be absolutely historic. In this video, we explain the most important information about this and what you can see from Europe. So be sure to stay tuned until the end. Welcome, friends. In just a few days, the astronomical highlight of the year will happen. To make sure as many people as possible hear about it, let's try to collect 500 likes for this video, because then YouTube will show it to more people who might then also discover their enthusiasm for space. What is a solar eclipse anyway? Let's clarify the basics first. Solar eclipses are probably the most spectacular astronomical event that can be seen with the naked eye from Earth. Perhaps some of you still remember the total solar eclipse of 1999, which was perfectly visible from Central Europe. I was only 8 years old at the time, and I have to say I don't really remember it, but please let me know in the comments if any of you have seen an eclipse. There are basically two types of solar eclipse, the total solar eclipse and the partial solar eclipse. During a total eclipse, the sun is completely covered by the moon so that it is virtually invisible for a short time. In contrast, during a partial eclipse, the moon only covers part of the sun's disk, partially obscuring it, but this can lead to super spectacular images as you can see here. The formation of a solar eclipse depends on the relative position of the sun, moon and earth to each other. In the course of a month, the moon moves around the earth on its orbit, as you probably know, and when the moon's orbit crosses the ecliptic, i.e. the apparent path of the sun in the sky, a solar eclipse can occur. The moon must be in its new moon phase, i.e i.e. between the Sun and the Earth. There is this very nice meme that is great for remembering the different constellations of the three celestial bodies in relation to each other. Lunar eclipse, when the Earth is between the Sun and the Moon and blocks the sunlight that would otherwise fall on the Moon. Solar eclipse, when the Moon is between the Earth and the Sun and blocks the sunlight that would otherwise fall on the Earth and the third case should better not happen that the sun is between the earth and the moon, that would then not be an eclipse, but an apocalypse. During a solar eclipse, the moon comes between the sun and the earth, blocking the sunlight and casting a shadow on the earth's surface. This shadow consists of two parts, the umbra, also known as the umbra, and the penumbra, also known as the penumbra. In the umbra, the sun is completely blocked and there is total darkness, while in the penumbra, part of the sun is blocked and there is partial eclipse. The duration and intensity of a solar eclipse then depend on various factors, including the relative size of the sun and moon and their exact position in relation to each other, as the moon's orbit is slightly inclined. Instead, they occur at irregular intervals and can be visible differently in different places on Earth. I can already hear some of you asking, how relative in size is the moon shrinking? Yes, at least apparently. As the moon's orbit around the Earth is not perfectly circular, the moon is sometimes a little closer to the Earth and sometimes a little further away. The point closest to the Earth is called perigee. The point furthest from the Earth is called apogee. When the moon is closer to the Earth, it logically appears larger and brighter, while at apogee it appears smaller and less bright. However, this does not necessarily have anything to do with the fact that the moon appears extremely bright and large on some evenings, it has more to do with how close it is to the horizon and that the brain then partly places it in relation to the buildings and the horizon. This is also called the moon illusion. We've already come this far, now we're being deceived by the moon. But no matter how much the moon obscures the sun, sunlight usually still penetrates past to the earth and therefore, as you hopefully know, it is dangerous to look into a solar eclipse without appropriate protection. On the NASA website it says, with the exception of the brief totality phase of a total solar eclipse, when the moon completely obscures the sun's brilliant face, it is not safe to look directly at the sun without special eye protection for solar viewing. What is not blocked is the outer atmosphere of the sun, the so-called corona. You should therefore only ever observe an eclipse with special solar eclipse glasses, which are not the same as normal sunglasses. So that was the obligatory safety advice, and now we come to the core of the eclipse. A total eclipse is now imminent on April 8th to be precise, but now comes the downer. The solar eclipse will only be visible in totality from North America. The total solar eclipse will be visible over a narrow strip stretching from Mexico to Canada. In this area, the sun will be completely covered by the moon and there will be complete darkness for a few minutes. Places like Texas, Ohio, New York, and Ontario are within the path of totality and offer the best viewing opportunities. NASA has created a very cool tool that I've linked below the video that allows you to interactively track the path of the eclipse. The 
duration of the total eclipse varies depending on the location within this path. In one region, the total phase will last up to a maximum of 4 minutes and 28 seconds, while in other areas it will be much shorter. It is therefore extremely dependent on the exact location, so unless you're in the USA, Canada or Mexico, you won't be able to see the total eclipse. But if you've been paying attention, you'll know. There is not only the umbra, but also the penumbra. In other words, a partial solar eclipse will be visible from many more countries, including some European countries. And here too, the great NASA tool helps us because we can display both the umbra and the penumbra. If we just run this through, we can see that some European countries are lucky towards the end of the eclipse. Iceland is fully in the penumbra, Ireland and Scotland also offer a potential observation, and Spain and Portugal are included through the Canary Islands, Madeira and the Azores. So if you are in one of these places, and I know from a vacation in Tenerife that a lot of people hang out there, then you can at least see a partial solar eclipse. Now of course there will be a lot of people who aren't in Iceland or Madeira who will be annoyed. But don't worry folks, I'll be doing a live stream on my main channel on April 8th where we'll be watching the total solar eclipse footage provided live by NASA. I would be very happy if you were there and experienced it with me. I think it could be really spectacular because the sun is just approaching its maximum activity. This means that if we're lucky, we could see some spectacular things with a bit of luck. There is even the possibility of seeing a coronal mass ejection, a gigantic burst of solar plasma during the eclipse. Total solar eclipse and solar activity maximum is a super rare combination. I'm really looking forward to it. And to make sure you don't miss it, you should also subscribe to my channel now. It's absolutely free. You'll never miss another galactic video and you'll help me immensely. So everyone subscribe diligently. And if you've already done so, remember to fill up the 500 likes. Well, the sky may soon darken not only because of a solar eclipse, but also because of the volcanic ash of the Phlegraean fields. This super volcano is becoming more and more active and there have just been two earthquakes one under the Phlegraean fields and one under Mount Vesuvius, which is now also becoming more active. This doesn't bode well for the people in Naples, and if it really does erupt, it will also affect us in Europe as it could change the global climate. You can see everything about the current developments and how likely an outbreak is in the video below. Otherwise, I'd say see you in the next video. Take care, friends.